when uh, the war happened, yeah. the big war, yeah. when Vladimir Putin sent his troops across the border in 22, you blamed the West, not him. You said, I'll right. just read it to you and then you can react, that on a tweet, it was a consequence of EU and NATO expansion. Is yes. that a judgment you stand by? Right. I'll tell you what you don't know. I stood up in the European Parliament in 2014 and I said, and I quote, there will be a war in Ukraine. Why did I say that? It was obvious to me that the ever eastward expansion of NATO and the European Union was giving this man a reason to his Russian people to say they're coming for us again and to go to war. But you were echoing him. I was... Sorry. You were echoing him. That's what Putin no, says. No, 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 no. Sorry, I've been saying this actually, actually since the 1990s. Ever since, ever since yeah. well, the so fall of the wall. <laughs> but hang on a second. We've provoked this war. It's, uh, you know, of course it's his fault. He's used what we've done we as But we provoked the invasion of yes, Ukraine. Yes, and very interestingly, once again, 10 years ago when I predicted this, by the way, I'm the only person in British politics that predicted what would happen. And of course... Everyone said I was a pariah for daring to suggest it. George Robertson, former Labour cabinet minister, who went on to become the Secretary General of NATO, has in the last couple of weeks said the war is a direct result of okay. EU expansion. But I'm asking you about so, because so, it's your judgment and you want to be Prime Minister. Let well, me ask you about judgment, someone else. My, you... my, my judgment has yeah. been way ahead of everybody else's okay. in you understanding this. Mm, a bit more on this, guys. So naturally, after that, the whole cascade happens, the whole avalanche. You're going to love this, Craig, because it kind of reminds me of what happened to you in 2021 with, with the jab. But the whole cascade comes down. The entire establishment comes back down after him. The big tech, obviously the media, more so than usual. They start saying, Nigel Farage, this is the headline, blames the West for the UK. Ukraine war, and they start piling on him. Um, Rich, Rishi Sunak and Starmer, the head of Labour, both turn on him, or both major parties. You've got these memes going around saying GB News is actually KGB News or for Putin. Um, and people are rightly pointing out, isn't it hilarious to watch Labour and Conservatives and the mainstream media pile on Farage? Now, Farage interestingly points out, hang on a sec, guys. It was Boris Johnson back in 2016 that actually said the exact thing that I said. But all of a sudden, it's, uh, it's, it's not kosher now. Um, and this is exactly what was said, but it doesn't stop people like Piers Morgan, who should know better after being so wrong during COVID. He said Farage continues to shamefully blame the West for the, the illegal Im uh, invasion of Ukraine. Um, the truth of the matter is, if you look at it, this is the the eastward expansion of Ukraine, and it's it's color coded. You know, in 1949, it started with France, France, and a, and a handful of countries, and slowly, 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 you see this eastward expansion um, towards Russia, and eventually getting to to Ukraine. Um, but none of this is really de deterring the reform vote. We're seeing a situation where. Richard Tice, the second in control of the party, he is looking to also get his seat as well as Nigel Farage. But we're seeing this this continuously roll on. We're seeing Facebook, they banned an interview from one of the Reform UK candidates, something Craig's familiar with. We're seeing Google cancelled the ad account mm. for the Farage campaign. It was later on reinstated. But why is it these, these mistakes keep piling up and they only go in one direction? And um, but this is again, this is not stopping Nigel. He was on the channel the next day, the, the English channel, that is. And he was calling out the boats and, and mm. campaigning quite brilliantly as there was a boat being escorted from France. The border force escort them to the British Isles and, and then and then hand them over to the to the British Co Coast Guard. It's not stopping him, though. And this is the last thing I'll play. This is um, another leader of another conservative party getting 100% behind Nigel And he is our messenger. All reclaimers, support Nigel, please. Please do. And you know what? We're now second in the opinion polls. I know Labour are a long way ahead, but with 11 days to go, we've got the big M going with us. Come on out. Make it so, team. Phenomenal people. But and one guy, I mean, James, he put it as, as two cheeks of the same uh, backside. Um, but... Uh, guys, what do you think about this particular story? Because obviously I've opined a lot on this, but what a case study for Australia with regards to how to make change. There's you... certainly a lot to say. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah, it's a lot, yeah, lot, it's it's a lot to say, isn't it? A lot to unpack, yeah. a lot of issues there, mm. sure. Especially on the, uh, the Ukraine-Russian war, okay? mm. The idea that there's sort of like uh, pure good and pure bad 
in that conflict, I think, is wrong whichever side that mm. you want to look at, right? And what disturbs me is there is not enough talk about ceasefire and peace. You've got so many leaders in the Western nations that seem to be pushing for more fighting, continue the war, right? Uh, what does victory look like for Ukraine? What it means it kills, they kill all their, the Russian young men before all the Ukrainian young men die. They're up to women. Is, 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 is that what it's about, right? They're up to there women. There should be calls for peace. Now, if you're looking from a historical um, you know, perspective, remember the, the losses that Russia had uh, during this. And I don't want to be an apologist for Russia, right? But look at the, 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 what they went through in the Second World War, the losses that they had, right? Fighting the Nazis. Fighting, fight, right, okay. They, they don't want what they see as a potential uh, enemy on their border. Now, that's no different to what the Americans wanted in Cuba. The Americans don't want missiles pointing at America uh, in Cuba. So you can't have it sort of sort of both ways in this thing. There's got to be a lot more talk about peace and and trying to like you know demonise one side all the time and sort of is, is not going to achieve that to to bring peace about. Secondly, on the issues of, of Farage, uh, you were right. This is the pile on that happens in the media. Uh, they all go after you over one issue and everyone just piles on, piles on. And to think that you've got these social media platforms, mm. this is foreign election interference. Mm. Well, now we had that in a, we had that during the Australian election. No one gave two. We couldn't raise two hoots about it. Right? I was unable to have a Facebook account during the election campaign. My Facebook account was banned. YouTube was censoring the speeches in the Australian federal parliament. So there was someone sitting in some office there, over in the US, in a foreign country, watching what was being said in Australian parliament. And George Christian himself, they go. No, we don't like what they're saying. That uh, mm. that contradicts to some of our big American corporations that are at Pfizer and this like they're trying to make all this money in Moderna. So we'll actually cancel that and censor that from the Australian people. Right? We we need. Um, you know, I believe there's we need new laws to protect the freedom of speech to to make sure that we can't have foreign these foreign tech platforms that are now effectively the new town square deciding who and who who will have, go to their platform during an election campaign. We've, imp we've appointed one of them chief um, e-safety officer. Yeah, we have. Julian Mangrand. But what's interesting... Right from Silicon Valley. There is a difference between when you got censored, Craig, and right now, and the difference is a lot of people know that when you get censored, you're over the target. You must be the person that's actually making some sort of sense. So when Nigel Farage is being censored, he's right over the mark. Mm. What happened, I'm sorry, to the Min Minsk agreement? Why are we not even looking at the Minsk agreement? That was the agreement between Russia that, that stated they don't want NATO on their d doorstep. Mm. And if anyone said Ukraine had no intention of joining NATO, that is completely incorrect. Ukraine did have an intention of joining NATO. There are Russians that were being ethnically cleansed in the Ukraine borders. And now Ukrainians have lost that many troops that is not on mainstream media that you have 17-year-olds and 18-year-old females mm. being drafted into the army. And I, I'm sorry, what business do women have fighting a war? Mm. This is insane. There was a peace deal on the table when Boris Johnson went over there and stopped it completely. We need a peace deal. This has got to cease immediately. Mm. You know, I'm. Uh, some of us here are old enough to remember the debate around 9-11, and uh, it was part of the course for channels like the ABC to blame the West and blame America mm. for 9-11. In fact, it seems to me that the Ukraine is about the one thing that's ever happened in human history that you're not allowed to blame America for. Everything else you pretty much can except for Ukraine. Now, when Nigel Farage says that what caused... Note that Nigel says sort of the language he uses is what caused um, Putin to go in, not what justified him to go mm. in. So he's a not... A big difference. A big difference, things. exactly. He's not saying that Putin had every right to do what he did in the way that he did it. He's simply saying the reason it mm. happened, the external reason it happened is because of the behaviour of America and NATO. That is, that's really sort of classic political science. And what he said, there's nothing original in what uh, Farage said it had all been said before him by a very famous, a very prestigious American political science, John Mearsheimer. Mm. In a lecture, you can find it on uh, YouTube. It's, it's, it's called something like, you know, um, uh, 
uh, Russia is going to invade Ukraine and it's all America's fault. It's literally probably got now about 30 million views. It is a, it's about a one-hour lecture by John Mearsheimer, one of the most distinguished political scientists in America. Now, not everyone agrees with him, mm. but the fact is that Nigel Farage's views have serious scholarly support. And I'm shocked that people get so upset, particularly, weirdly, the left. People in sort of in the mainstream left media get really annoyed when people make the claim that the Ukraine war is somehow a sordid affair and something that, to, for the most part, was caused by America's actions in that region. And, and not just inviting other countries close uh, on Russia's borders to join NATO, but actually interfering in Ukrainian elections to make sure that leaders are pro-American. That's another thing that they've been implicated in. Zelensky. That's, well, Zelensky and, and, and before that as yeah. well. Um, so, so it just baffles me that... Uh, look, here's the bottom line. To, to, to bring this issue to the UK election, the British don't give... And here's a nice British expression. They don't give a tinker's cuss about what's going on in Ukraine. Um, as long as they don't have a, f a bunch of Ukrainian refugees coming to England, they don't give a tinker's cuss about what's going on there. So the media, being as out of touch as it, as it is, can make as much of whatever Nigel Farage said as they want. The people don't care. They care about the cost of living. They care about immigration. They couldn't care less about anything he says controversial about Ukraine. That's not going to affect one vote. Yeah. Um, just an update, guys. I, I am watching this live stream uh, right now. Julian Assange, is his plane has just touched down. These are live images from Canberra's airport. Um, 